Our dear Father, we come together this morning and as I was saying earlier, we just want to to be in your presence. Lord, we want to we want to come near to you and experience who you are, all that you are. Lord, we don't want to uh, come with any assumptions or any expectations. We want to just be in your presence. So we know that if we can do that, everything will become so much more clear to us. We thank you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, the last... There we go. Last uh, week we talked about Martha and Mary. And so we've kind of, starting at this beginning of the year, we've been walking through the, the chapter 10 of Luke and, and seeing what the Lord has to tell us about this. And, and keeping in mind that we've begun the year by saying, let's find joy. And, and even in this first month, we've discovered that finding joy isn't about searching for joy. It's about drawing close to Jesus. And as we looked at the story of Martha and Mary, we, we understood that uh, Martha came and she asked a very profound question to Jesus. When she went to him and she was flustered and she was upset and she said, Jesus, don't you care? Don't you care? And, and Jesus' response was, was just such a beautiful response because first of all, he showed understanding. He said, Martha, you're worried. You're anxious. You're bothered by so many things. And, and then... In such a, a muted, uh, almost a mundane conversational tone, he gave her instruction. He said, there's, there's, there's one thing that's important. One thing that's absolutely necessary. And so he showed compassion, and he showed direction. And he did it in such a, a beautiful way. He didn't condemn her for asking. It's just a really beautiful way that he came to this. Now, that was closing out Luke chapter 10. So if we were to go to the next chapter, it looks something like this. We have the introduction, our instruction about prayer. And so chapter 11 begins in verse 1, and it happened that while Jesus was praying in a certain place. Sometimes we get caught up in our modern day scripture. I want to let you know that that. Luke wrote this gospel. Luke was a physician back in the first century. And when he wrote this, he didn't write chapter 11, verse 1. Okay? And sometimes we allow these things and these titles that are put in here by, 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 by people, by humans, by, by, uh, uh, by the Bible. Uh, what is the word I'm looking for? Scholars are, you know, they put in these titles that Luke didn't put in here. Okay, and so we get caught up and we go, okay, here's the end of the story of Martha and Mary. New topic, different chapter. We're going to start on something else, and now we're going to talk about prayer. But that's not what Luke did. What Luke did, and it looks more something like this. The Lord answered and said to her, Martha, you're worried, you're bothered about so many things, but only one thing is necessary, and Mary has chosen the good part, which shall not be taken away from her. And then it happened while Jesus was praying in a certain place. When Luke wrote it, there was no break. There was no, uh, okay, let me put the pen down. Tomorrow we'll pick up, we'll pick up chapter 11, different topic. When Luke wrote this, this was a reason that he put these two back to back. And if we look at what Peter has to say about prayer, it gives us an idea because Peter says in chapter, our first Peter, Chapter 5, verse 7, he says, Casting all of your anxiety on him, casting all of your worries on him, casting all of your, the things that bother you, if you will go to him and cast them all upon him, because he cares for you. And Peter says, this is what prayer is about. You go to him and you cast everything onto him because he cares. And this is exactly what Martha was saying. Martha was saying, do you care? And Jesus says, absolutely I care. And here's this topic that God has given us to help answer this question. Prayer. Now 
Now, how do we combine works and relationship, our, our, our works and, and relationship with God, which is what Martha was struggling with? We go to, to God in prayer. We ask God, do you care? Then, then the answer to that is we go to God in prayer. We ask God uh, and, and tell him, hey, I, I'm anxious about a lot of things. And he says, well, come to me in prayer. We have a, uh, a Wednesday night group at our home. And it's college students. And this began a couple of years ago. And what happened was uh, we, we've got a mix of young adults in this group. And we, we had a young man come in and he said, and he struggles with different issues in life and different things. And, and he says, we need a group where we can sit down and we can just talk. I mean, real talk. We said, okay. And so we gathered together and we've started to do that. And, and there's no topic that's off limits. And we've told them, hey, listen, you, you can tell us when we're giving you an answer that's just a pat answer. So they've named this group the BS group. Now... I want to tell you, Jalal and I, we say that stands for Bible study, okay? <laughs> but what they do is they reserve the right to throw a card and say, wait a minute, that answer is just a pat answer. Because sometimes as Christians we do that. Somebody comes and they pour their heart out, oh, I've got all these problems, and what do we say? Well, just love Jesus. <laughs> Have a good day. And a lot of times this is what we do with prayer. Somebody says, oh, I'm having all this problem. And we go, well, just pray about it. And you know what? Those two answers are great. But what does that mean? What, what does it mean, A, to love Jesus? And what does it mean to pray? I've had people come up and say, I don't, I don't know how to do that. How do you pray? And this isn't a... a, a I don't think this is just an issue of me or, or just an issue of new Christians. This is, this is a, a universal issue. There's a, a man named Sinclair Ferguson. And if you're into the Christian circle at all and you know big names, big Christian names, big theologians, Sinclair Ferguson is one of those people. He's a theologian. He's a Scottish theologian. I've noticed the only difference between Scottish and Irish is the Irish are always very happy when they talk. And Scottish is the same accent except they're really angry when they talk. Sinclair Ferguson wrote this. He said, Years ago, the editor of a publishing company asked me to write a book on prayer, and the theme is vitally important. Vitally important. The publishing house was well known, and to be honest, I felt flattered. But in a moment of heaven-sent honesty, I told them that the author of such a book would need to be an older, older and more seasoned author, not to, not to mention, alas, more prayerful than I was. I mentioned one name and then another. My reaction seemed to encourage him to a moment of honesty as well. He smiled. He had already asked the well-seasoned Christian leaders whose names I had just mentioned, and they too had declined on similar terms. Prayer is a difficult topic. It's a difficult thing. It's mentioned in Scripture over 300 times. If you just look at the word prayer, and that doesn't even include all the times that Jesus says ask, or the Bible says talk to God, or come to God, all the other things, but just over 300 times, just the word prayer. It's so important. We're called to it as believers in Christ to pray. And, and most of us do. Most of us will partake in prayer to some way, shape, or form, or fashion. But if, uh, if, if all of these surveys have any validity to them, then, then while most of us will pray to some degree, whether it's for 10 seconds or 10 minutes a day, most of us don't find any fulfillment or satisfaction in prayer. In fact, some of you might be sitting there going, oh my gosh, I wish he wasn't talking about prayer. Prayer is just a topic that brings me guilt. Prayer is just one of those things that when it's brought up, I just feel bad because I don't do it enough. And when I do do it, I don't do it right. And I really just don't know what I'm doing. I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing. 
it becomes more of an issue of guilt than, than of joy. So, why are we talking about it today? Well, a couple of reasons. First of all, we're called to it. God tells us to do this. He calls us to be prayerful people. And we're going to explore this month why we're called to it and what is the purpose and what, what for. But the second reason is because we said at the beginning of this year that we're going to, we're going to reach out and find joy in our faith. And by, and by doing that, we have to draw close to Jesus Christ. And you cannot draw close to Jesus Christ without communicating with Jesus Christ. Plain and simple. You can be like Martha and you can dance around him all you want. And, and you can act like, and, and serve him and go under the guise of, of serving him. You can go to all the church services you want. But if you don't communicate with Jesus Christ, you're not going to draw close to him. So I want to confess to you this morning that, that I'm, I fall in the same boat as a whole lot of people. I, I pray. I feel like I should pray more. And many times when I pray, I don't feel like it's as fulfilling as I feel like it should be. I don't feel like it's as satisfying as I feel like it should be. And sometimes it becomes an issue of guilt for me, just like a whole lot of other people. I ask the same questions that everybody asks. Does, does it do any good? Does it make any difference when I pray? I mean, is my prayer, is it supposed to change me or is it supposed to change God? I don't know. What's the proper way to pray? Is there, am I supposed to do in the morning, in the evening, on my knees, standing up, face down? What's the proper way to do this? I, you know, the English word prayer comes from the same Latin word. It comes from the Latin word precarios. Our English word precarious. Precarious means it's, it's unknown. We just don't know. It's, and it comes from the same word, prayer. But our prayer life doesn't have to be that way. I've done more reading on prayer this week than I, maybe I ever have in my life. And it's been so encouraging to read these books by these greats and read all of these, 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 these words about all the stuff that prayer does and how you can get this relationship with God. And I'm reading about it and I'm like, oh, this is good. This is great stuff. And then about midway through the week, I realize I haven't done it. I'm just reading about it. just reading about it and, and how everybody else is finding such enjoyment and, and enrichment out of it. It's theory versus practice. And we've talked about that. You know, I can read and, and I can tell you and I can convince you that prayer is important and it is vital and it is helpful and it is beautiful and it's uplifting and, and all of these things. And you can go, yes, all oh, that sounds great. But unless you do it, it doesn't matter. It just doesn't matter. So I think before we go any further into this topic, the first question we have to ask is, what is your expectation when you go into prayer? What is it you're expecting when you go into prayer? And, and to be quite honest, I think most of us go to prayer just like the guy in the coffee shop does. We get our list and we go and we sit down and go, okay, God, here we go. Ready? Um, Aunt Mabel, uh, the dog Fluffy, you know, all the secretaries. And you, and you, and you go through your list. Amen. We go to him and we, we want answers and we want direction. We want healing. We want miracles. We want, we want, we want. When we go to God. Whatever we say our expectation is, the experience seems to be that that's what we're doing. We're going and we're saying, God, give me. Give me. Give me what I'm asking for. Fix this. Fix that. Give me this thing. Give me that other thing. Now listen, I know, I know, I know that Scripture says you have not because you ask or not. I know that is part of prayer. Absolutely, positively, we should go to God and we should bear our hearts and then the things that we desire in life and, and for the good of, of, of God and His glory, we should be asking God. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is that if I'm sitting at McDonald's and a stranger comes up to me and asks for a French fry, I'm much, much less likely to give him one than if my granddaughter asks me for a French fry. 
Because I have spent time with my granddaughter where she has cried and I have held her and rocked her. I have spent time with her when she's fallen down and I've comforted her and, and hold her close. I've sang songs to her as she's drifted to sleep. I've spent that time with her and I am much, much more likely when she comes to me to grant her what she needs and her requests. But we skip that part. We skip the part where we spend time with God. Have you had those moments with God when you just, when you've fallen down and you've had a rough day and you say, God, just hold me. I don't need you to fix anything. I don't need you to do anything. Just hold me. God, I'm exhausted. Just, just sing me to sleep, God. Just be close to me and I just want to feel the comfort of being close. Before we ask anything else about prayer, we need to wash away all of our expectations and simply draw close. If we look into... My, my, one of my big questions when I delve into this, this prayer question is I know that the Bible tells us that Jesus prayed. And so I looked into the Gospels, the four Gospels that tell the story of Jesus' life, and I say, okay, I want to see when did Jesus pray? And there's about nine different times when, when the Gospels specifically talk about Jesus praying. And so I wanted to look and see what are the circumstances under which it's recorded that Jesus prayed. Now certainly he prayed a lot more than that. But it's recorded about nine different instances. Jesus went to his father. He secluded himself and went to his father in three different occasions. Three different times. And one is in celebration. When Jesus was baptized in the Jordan and, and the Holy Spirit came down and, and it said that Jesus was praying. Not only was he praying, but that's one of those times when God said, Hey, this is my son. We're just celebrating this time together. Jesus wasn't asking for anything. He's like, God, let's just celebrate. This is fantastic. Sharing his heart. Another time is the transfiguration. And there's a lot that went into the transfiguration, but when Jesus went up on the mountain and he was talking with Moses and Elijah and he was transfigured, this glorious time that he stood with God and communed with God and prayed. We also see that in times of sorrow, Jesus went and prayed. We can see that when John the Baptist, his cousin, was beheaded, he was trying to get alone and pray. He kept getting inundated with the crowds and he just wanted to get alone and pray and, and just, God, I'm, I'm so broken hearted right now. I want to be close to you. We can see that in the Garden of Gethsemane before he's, he's ready to face the cross that he goes and we see one of the most intense prayer sessions in Scripture when he lays before God and, and his, his sweat it comes like blood dripping from him because he's just pouring out his heart to God. We see that there's times when he's looking for dependence upon God. He's like, God, I've got to make a decision. I've got to choose 12 disciples, 12 apostles. And he goes before God and he prays about this. He's like, I'm depending upon you. I'm leaning upon you. I'm going to make this decision, but I'm leaning upon you that you're going to guide me. We see the times that when Jesus draws near God and when he prays, it's not so much... God, give me, give me, give me. It's God, I just want to share this moment with you and I just want to be close to you and I need to be near you so that I can be focused and aligned and understand what I need to do. We get so uh, tickled with our little ones when our little ones, you know, we're teaching them how to do something and they get to a point where they, I do it myself. And, and, and as parents are you know, human beings, we applaud that. Oh, look at the independence. That's so wonderful. But Jesus tells us, hey, apart from me, you can do nothing. You can do nothing apart from me. You need to be aware of that. Not that Jesus needs to do it for us, but we've got to draw close to him. We can't be apart from him. We need to be near him. Draw close to him. But I really want to point out the fact that our faith is not just about serving God. 
or finding direction on how to serve God. That's a big part of it. You know, we can go over, and serving God is, is big. It's, it's so important. He calls us to a service. And, and seeking God in His direction for that is so vitally important. But it's not just serving for or seeking from, but it's being with God. That's the beautiful thing about our faith is that we can be with God. C.S. Lewis says, The prayer that precedes all prayers should be this. May it be the real I who speaks, and may it be the real thou that I speak for, or thou that I speak to. So in other words, when you go to God in prayer, then you need to, to be honest. This is the one place where you can be entirely and completely honest and not be judged for it. You can go to God and you can tell Him, God, you know, I, I'm supposed to pray for Aunt Jo, but I just really don't care. And I know that's wrong. I should care. So Lord, I want to pray because uh, I should care and I don't care. And I want to pray for my apathy. Lord, I, I prayed today at church and I did a really good job. I used all the big words and I looked great. And, you know, I need to be honest, Lord, I, it was about me. It was about how I looked in front of others and I said all the right words. You can go before God and be who you really are and be honest and admit. So I want to challenge you and to practice that this week. And I'm, going to, I'm going to tell you where I've been in the boat where prayer is not satisfying since preparing this message and coming to that conclusion that it's not about going to God just to ask but going to God just to share. In the last few days my prayer life has been entirely different for me. It's, it, it's so weird because it's such a habit. You know, I'm driving along and I'm praying. I'm going, God, here's this issue and this problem. And, and then I get to a point, I'm like, okay, now I'm supposed to ask for something. It's like a habit. God, fix it. But to pause there and go, God, I'm not asking you to fix it. I just want to just want to share. Wow. It's amazing. I'm going to urge you to have that conversation with God this week. Share your heart. Share your joy. Share your anger with God. Share your doubt, your fear. Share your struggles. Just seek His presence. Not stuff. Not gifts. I have one. Not direction. Not wisdom. Just His presence. We're so scared to do that sometimes. Philip Yancey wrote a great book called Prayer. And in it he says, I hide myself in fear that God will be displeased. Though in fact, the hiding may be what displeases God most. Turn off the radio. Pour out your heart. Make no requests, just share. When you're interrupted with thoughts and, and oh man this happened so much to me this week things coming to me you gotta do this gotta do that just go see God see all this stuff that I'm I'm worried about this stuff bothers me this stresses me all these things that just want to want to take my mind away from you and share with them Lay all of your expectations of answers and miracles and sounds and healings and voices and everything else. Lay all that aside. Let your only expectation this week to meet with God. Just meet with God. Make a connection. He who has learned to pray has learned the greatest secret of a holy and happy life. Dear Father, today we just 
want to be in your presence. Lord, we want to come to you with no expectations other than your arms. Lord, we want to bask in the glory of who you are and your love for us. Lord, we don't want to come and ask anything of you. We thank you that you are available to us, that you hear us. We want a relationship with you. We want that joy that comes from knowing you. And we know, Lord, that we have to communicate and be near you. You tell us that eternal life is knowing you. You, you warn us that if we stand before you and say, God, I served you, I did all this stuff, I ran around, I was busy, I shouted out your name, then if you would say, I didn't know you. We must first know you. Lord, impress upon us this week the need just to come to you and unburden, share our hearts, drink in your peace, your beauty, your comfort. I thank you for all that you are and all that you've done. In Jesus' name, amen.